What's up, guys? How are you? Happy Wednesday. Welcome in to another episode of the Daily Juice Podcast. My name is Matt Peralt. You guys can follow me across all socials at Sports Talk Matt. This podcast being brought to you by OmahaStakes.com. There is a custom URL to use that will give us credit if you're winning money with us. If you want to say thank you, great way to do so. OmahaStakes.com slash juice. And for doing so, they're going to give you four free chicken breasts and four free pork chops with any order you go and make through omahasteaks.com slash juice. Minimum purchase may be required. 100% money back guarantee. Okay, uh, two and one last night, so a winning night. Could have swept it. I don't want to come on here and cry about a two and one night. I'm always going to be happy. I'll go two and one the rest of my life and be very, very happy if that's what, what would what would happen. But, man, so if you didn't watch the game for BYU and Houston, they were down one. Same thing, like, same time, about about 45 seconds, like the Stony Brook game a couple of nights ago. But the best three-point shooter for BYU, top of the key, wide open three. Heel, back heel, missed it. If he knocks that down, we're going to cover. Now, I'm not sure sure BYU wins the game, but we're going to cover because BYU is going to go up by two. Houston's going to go down, bleed the clock, Maybe Houston wins the game by one or two or three points, but the plus we probably would have been good, maybe one or two. Or BYU wins the game outright. So make or miss game to make or miss league, as they say. So we get two easy W's. South Carolina worked Kentucky. That game wasn't even close. And then West Virginia got blown out like I thought that they would. After they beat KU, it was just, it was obvious. They go on the road. It's like, yeah, that's a bad matchup for West Virginia there. So we got their loss correct, and we got the win for South Carolina right. Two and one, up 0.9 units on the night. Okay, so we're back here again. Three bets. I am going to dip my toe in hockey, all right? I got two college basketball bets. This is a, I got two games this was a tough, I, I did a lot of research. I, I really, I went back and forth on a bunch of different plays. Uh, normally, I like trust my gut and I'm a little bit on the analytical side on this one for the, for my first college basketball bet, but I'll explain that here in a second. Let's start with hockey. St. Louis is at Vancouver. Vancouver has just been tremendous at home. I mean, th- just a, a, a great, great team at home. They are 17-4-1 at home. St. Louis is 9, 12, and 1 on the road. Now, you might go, Matt, just take the favorite. Well, it's minus 220. All right, it's really expensive. I do think Vancouver is going to win this game over St. Louis, but I'm not in love with it. Matt, lay the puck line. Yeah, but how many times have I had that happen when we lose by taking the puck line and giving my record in hockey? I don't want to, like, tempt fate, okay? So... It's plus one. It's uh, plus one ten. If you want to lay the goal and a half, you can do that. If you want, Vancouver has been, you know, relatively on the puck line this year. Uh, Vancouver has been tremendous. I mean, in fact, they are the number one team on the puck line in the entire NHL. Thirty three and fourteen on the puck line. You'd be up twenty four units if you played every game involving Vancouver on the puck line. The total of this game is either six or six and a half. Again, I don't mind betting Vancouver. I don't mind betting Vancouver on the puck line. I don't mind betting Vancouver in 60 in regulation. Okay, I I, I don't don't mind that bet at all. Let's see what the price is for that game. Um, Betting it in 60 will get you a minus 160 price. So it's not that much better, but you can bet that. Okay, so either plus one and a half goals, the most profitable team in all of hockey for Vancouver. You can take it. However, I'm going to look to the total. It's either six or six and a half, okay? FanDuel has this at six and a half because FanDuel does not do half numbers, okay? Most books are at six, juice to the over. FanDuel is at six and a half, juice to the under. I'd rather go under. Why? Okay, so if you look at the last five games for the Blues, 5 2, 4 3, 4-2, 5-0, 3-0. Last three games have all gone under. St. Louis is a team will last game 4-3. They were last night. They're on, on a back-to-back 4-3. They won the game at Calgary 4-3. Not in, not in, uh, went over, but not in regulation, you know, in regulation, sorry, not in overtime for the Canucks. They've played, um, did they play last night? And I don't believe they did. I don't think, yeah, that's why they're heavy favorite. They didn't play last night. So they're not on a back-to-back two, nothing, six, four, two, one, four, three, one, nothing back and forth, back and forth, up and down. Right? So, if you're going off that, it's a three and two mark to the under over the last five games. 
These two teams have played two times so far. 5 nothing win for the Canucks. 2-1 win for the Blues. Home team has won both games. Thatcher Demko is expected in net for Vancouver. Thatcher Demko, for most of this year, has been tremendous at home. Goals against average of 2.13. 16-3 record. All right? I'm making a hell of a case to bet the puck line. I get it. I'm just scared to bet the puck line. <laughs> puck line's probably a good bet. They're going up against a young goaltender for St. Louis, and it's not Bennington, which I kind of like. It's Hoffer. All right, he's 7-8 and eight with a 2.88 goals against average. But on the road, he has more than a full goal difference on the road. He's 4-4 four and four with a 2.36 goals against average. At home, he's 3-4 and four with a, with a 3.48 goals against average. Big, big difference. Last time out against Pittsburgh, 4-3 loss. Gave up three goals. Open net goal came in. Against Florida on the road, 4-1. He only gave up one goal. Against Tampa on the road, a 6-1 loss. He came in in relief, gave up one goal. 5-2 loss to Columbus. He gave up four goals in that one. We don't want to see that happen. And then against Arizona, a 4-3 loss. Oh, sorry, 4-1 loss. He gave up three goals. I don't know how many goals Thatcher Demko is going to give up tonight. I think two is what I kind of feel. Feel So, like, I think this is a 4-2 win. And I want to take the extra half a puck and say, all right, go under at minus 122, under 6.5. You can bet the over 6 if you want. There's a really good push potential for that. But what if it's a 3-1 win, right? Or a 3-2 win. I'd rather play the under. I feel better about the under than I do crossing my fingers and hoping that we get home on the puck line. Yes, it's a plus money bet, but I feel, look, it could be a 5-2 win. It's very possible. Maybe Hoffer gets completely lit up, but like I mentioned, he's much better at home than he, or sorry, on the road rather, than he is at home. And Thatcher Demko has just been, I mean, he's in the conversation for the Vesna. If it wasn't for what Hellebuck's been doing, I think you could come in and say, like, you know, Thatcher Demko would wind up winning the Vesna right now if you, you know, took, he's 25 8 and 1 with a 2.40 goals against average. In his games at home recently, last game out, shut out Chicago, 2 0. Gave up four goals against Toronto, which is more on them here in a second, then one goal to Arizona. So the last three home stand, gave up five goals in three games. Okay. Before that at home against Ottawa, gave up three goals. Uh, against San Jose, gave up four goals. Against Florida, he shut him out. Against Tampa, he gave up one. Like he's just one, two, or three goals is what he's going to give up tonight. Probably two. Four, two final. I'm going under. Under six and a half, minus 122. Fandles got this. Thatcher Demko in Vancouver at home, under six and a half. I mentioned Toronto. So the Bruins lit up the Winnipeg Jets. Just absolutely lit them up. You can bet the under two and a half again if you want involving the Jets on the road against Toronto. You can. But given the offensive firepower for Toronto, I am very wary of doing this. It's going to come back down to earth. We know this. We're going to see a run here. The team total for the Toronto Maple Leafs under two and a half goals is plus 150. That's a bigger price than what the Boston Bruins were when they scored four goals in the last game against Winnipeg. They were plus 140. So, uh, I don't know. I mean, you can play the trend if you want. I'm not even going to get involved because, again, I think it does wind up, wind up evening itself out. And we could see a run here where we're like, oh my gosh, what happened to that streak and what happened to the Jets? I, I don't, it, it's scary to me to come in and say that, 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 that Toronto's not going to score three goals. I, I think it's really possible they score three goals. And then you lose. It's going to be Samsonov in net for Toronto. It's Brossois in net for Winnipeg, which isn't awful, okay? I mean, both goaltenders are really good. 7-3 and three with a 2.18 goals against average. Uh, you know, in 11 outings so far this year, he's been tremendous with a 2.18 goals against average and 9.23 save percentage. I, yeah, but, I mean, the Maple Leafs offense is really good. Top five in the NHL, so... Best of luck if you want to go ahead and jump on that. That's the, if it is going to be Brossois, that's going to be tough. So 
I don't know. I, I, I would be careful of that if I were you in terms of riding that Jets trend. Okay, under six and a half, minus 122. 1.22 units down. All right, let's talk about Alabama and Auburn. This is the game of the night. Ken Palm's fifth-ranked team in Auburn. Alabama, Ken Palm's eighth-ranked team. Alabama, the number two offense in efficiency in college basketball. Auburn, the seventh-ranked defense in efficiency. Alabama's offense, third in effective field goal percentage. Auburn's defense, third in effective field goal percentage. Bama's three-point percentage, 13th in college basketball. Auburn's three-point defense, 18th in college basketball. Two-point percentage, 11th for Alabama in college basketball. Auburn, third in college basketball. I mean, this is offense power versus defensive power. The total in this game, Kempom has this at 168. It's down to 161. Like, there is something going on right now in terms of either Auburn or... They believe that Auburn's going to take the air out of the ball in a big, big way, and they're not going to look to run or allow Alabama to run. I mean, it's down to 161, 161 and a half. This opened at 165 and a half. Again, Kempom has this at 168. There's a massive discrepancy between these two teams. Now, you can sort of play it out, though, as to like why would an over be a real big possibility? Well, Auburn... On the year, 77th in adjusted tempo. Alabama, 25th in adjusted tempo. Alabama wants to run and shoot threes. Here is the interesting part here. Auburn's defense is great. Alabama's defense isn't bad. Auburn's offense is eighth best in efficiency. Very efficient offense for Auburn, for Bruce Pearl. 47th in effective field goal percentage, but 165th in three-point percentage. 27th in two-point percentage. They get half of their points from inside the arc. They get 28% of their points outside the arc. They don't shoot the three. This game's going to come down to three-point shooting, period. Alabama gets 38% of their points from behind the arc. That is 27th in college basketball in terms of you know, number, the, the number 27 in terms of how many points they get. You know, inside the top 30 for points from behind the arc. They jack threes, right? Three-point attempts per game. Well, they put them up, man. 47 attempts per game from behind the arc. They're going to run, they're going to gun, and they're going to look to shoot. Here is the interesting thing with Auburn. I listened to, to the press conference yesterday with Bruce Pearl. I, I really went deep here. I looked at team notes, and I listened to Bruce Pearl. And he said, we're not tested on the road. We're, we're not. We're going to be after this week because they have Alabama, and then they turn around on Saturday and go to Starkville to play Mississippi State. But that concerns me. This Auburn team lost at Appalachian State. They beat Arkansas 83-51, and that's a tough place to play with Bo Walton Arena, but how good's Arkansas? I don't really know. Lost to Baylor to start the year, 88-82. But since the loss to Appalachian State, they beat Indiana, they beat USC, they beat Arkansas, they beat AM, they beat LSU, they beat Vanderbilt, they beat Ole Miss. How good are they? I mean, bet Auburn's number one win this year is over Texas AM, 6-655 at home, the 41st ranked team in Kempa. Alabama's eight. They haven't played anybody inside the top 10. Now, I'm not saying Alabama's schedule is that much better, but it kind of is. I mean, Alabama went through a trek where they played Purdue, Creighton, and Alabama in three straight games. Now, they lost them all, okay? But they played against Purdue on a neutral. They went to Omaha to play the Creighton Blue Jays, and they went to a semi, went to Phoenix to play Arizona. And they lost 87 to 74. That game got away from them. But in terms of like who have they played, they played Tennessee in their last game and they lost by 20. This doesn't factor into my trend of lose a road game and come back home and you're a dog. Bama's favored. Bama's minus two and a half. I got to go with my gut here. College basketball on the road. Yes, I know Houston beat BYU last night and we were on the home dog and we lost. I understand that. But look what South Carolina did to Kentucky last night. I mean, that's a, that's an unranked team that destroyed a top 10 team. Destroyed them. They needed it. South Carolina desperately needed it, and they 
killed them. I'm going to lay the two and a half points. Alabama minus two and a half up against the, I guess, against Auburn here. I went and looked at the historic numbers. Alabama last year, they beat them twice. Two times last year. Alabama has won the last two times. Uh, no, sorry. Last year, they beat them at home 90 to 85. It was a 10 point spread. They didn't cover, but they won. In 2020, uh, they won at Alabama, won at Auburn, and they won at home. The last year, two years ago, Alabama lost 81 77. They were three point home favorites, and they lost this game. Nate Oates remembers that. Bama won in March of 2021. Bama won 70 to 58. The last two times this game has been played in Tuscaloosa, the game's gone over. I don't mind the over. It's the line move that's the problem for me right now. I'm I'm really worried about that. I mean, that's significant. Ken Palm has this. It's a seven-point discrepancy, and it's not going back up. It's going down. 60, 161. Ken Palm, 168. It's 161. You don't see that very often unless a major player for Auburn is out. I have scoured looking around trying to go like, what? who could be out for Auburn? I can't see it. Who's out for Bama? I can't find it. No injuries to report. Should be good to go. Look, I read a big breakdown in the Tuscaloosa News. They're taking Auburn to win this game, saying Alabama hasn't beaten anybody yet. Good. Auburn hasn't played anybody good yet. I, I can't back Auburn because, well, Auburn hasn't beaten anybody. As I mentioned, you can say, well, Matt, they've played Ohio State. They played Clemson. They played Tennessee. They played Arizona. They played Creighton. They played Purdue. They lost every game. True. The difference, none, only one of those games was at home. Clemson was at home. They lost that game. Everything else was neutral or on the road. This game's at home. This is a rivalry game. I'm not saying Nate Oates kind of has Bruce Pearl's number, but it's college basketball. It's a rivalry game. It's on the road. It's essentially a money line play. I'm laying the two and a half. Alabama minus two and a half for 1.1 units. And the third bet, you can take everything I just said <laughs> and throw it out the window because Iowa State is hosting Kansas State. According to Kempom, it's a nine-point win for Iowa State. Lines eight. This is the Big 12. I know Iowa State has won and covered by an average of 10 points. Iowa State at home is 10 and 1 ATS. I'm not kidding you. They're 10 and 1 ATS. That is an incredible mark. Iowa State's going to be extremely difficult to face here tonight for Kansas State. But the thing is that K-State is 5 and 2 ATS on the road. They're 7 and 3 over the last 10 and 4 and 1 in conference. Iowa State's 3 and 2 in conference ATS. Yes, they're 10 and 1. Oklahoma State, they killed them, won by 24. Against Houston, we bet them, they won by 4. But those are the only two games they've played at home in the Big 12. Everything else is kind of cupcake city. Like, okay, they killed Iowa. All right, great. How good's Iowa? They killed Grambling. They killed Idaho State. You know, they killed Florida AM. You know, they killed Eastern Illinois. Like, the number's inflated. The 10 and 1 number is kind of inflated. We're on the road. Kansas State's gone to West Virginia, one by 14. Went to Texas Tech, lost by one as six point dogs. They covered. Against uh, LSU on the road, three point dogs. They won by 15. They took on Nova. I don't know, a home game. Um, I mean, they've just played, I think, a tougher brand of competition to be quite honest, and who K-State has played. I mean, K-State on the road, lost Texas Tech. They lost to Nebraska at home, which was somewhat of a surprising situation. They lost to Miami and on a neutral and lost to USC in the first game of the year. But they beat Oklahoma State in their last game. They beat Baylor at home in overtime, 68-64. Look, I know Iowa State's great, but I'm going to expect this game. This is too many points. I'm going to take the eight points here with Kansas State and, and kind of fade that 10 and one mark for Iowa State and say, okay, like who exactly have you played at home 
that makes you go like, I mean, yes, okay, Houston is a tremendous win, okay? But like, are they going to kill them? I mean, even when they beat Houston, they won by four. I think Iowa State wins the game. I'm not saying Iowa State's going to lose the game. I just think eight points is too heavy. I know I just talked about road. Going on the road in college basketball is death. And like, you can't win on the road. It's really difficult in conference. You, you go walk into a buzzsaw. But I mean, they just beat TCU on the road. 73-72 in a crazy game, like right down to the wire game against TCU. I think they win, but they got Kansas coming up this weekend at home. I'm not saying that Iowa State is looking ahead past Kansas State, but fans would. They know KU's coming to town. Kansas State's kind of like a, let's just win the game and move on. For that reason, I'm taking the points. Iowa, sorry, Kansas State plus eight on the road at Iowa State. All right. Three bets for us, two in college basketball and one in the NBA. I'm laying the two and a half points with Alabama. I'm taking the, the eight points with Kansas State, and I'm laying under six and a half. I am going to go on the under for Vancouver at home up against St. Louis for 1.22 units. Let's keep it going. Let's have another good night. Two and one is fine. Let's win. Let's go three and oh tonight. Why not? My name is Matt Peralt. Follow me across all socials at Sports Talk Matt each and every morning. The DLG's podcast is being brought to you by OmahaSteaks.com.